people pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. Everyone pretend podcasting isn't boring. Turn it off. В момент укуса жертва получает психическую команду. Настолько сильную, что она способна подчинить себе даже динозавра. Это гуманный биологический пакт, выработанный за многие миллионы лет. Жертва делится кровью, но сохраняет жизнь. Что ж, поздравляю, теперь ты один из нас. Люди издавна верили, что в мире торжествует зло, а добро вознаграждается только после смерти. Поэтому любой нормальный человек, который ищет счастье на земле, так или иначе встает на сторону зла. Когда границы установлены, за их пределами можно спрятать целый мир. Вампиры используют те же ментальные конструкции, что и человек. Но его мысль движется по другому маршруту. Мой мозг начал работать по-новому. Это диктатура, как сами понимаете. Гуманная эпоха в Empire Empire. Вселенской империи вампиров. Или, как мы пишем в символической форме, Empire V. Ты не похож на людей и должен об этом помнить. Пора развязывать с этими левыми пантами. Взрослить надо, сынок. Что мне теперь? Жить как паразит? Ты есть паразит. Все вампиры мира регулярно скидываются на очередной фильм про вампиров, чтобы никто из людей не догадался, кто и как сосет красную жидкость на самом деле. Hey folks, welcome to a special episode of The Projection Booth. I'm your host, Mike White. On this episode, I'm continuing my coverage of the Fantasia Film Festival with a discussion with Victor Ginsberg. He is the writer and director of the new film Empire V. Actually, it's not that new. It was supposed to come out last year. You'll hear why you didn't get to see it last year and why it's playing the Fantasia Film Festival this year. I had a great time talking with Victor. I hope you enjoy the interview as much as I enjoyed conducting it. I'm so curious. How you made that transition from your early days of music videos into doing feature films. Can you tell me a little bit about that transition? I burnt out on music videos, probably directed about 30 of them. And I always wanted to make films, of course. And music videos, I was channeled into that. Life channeled me into it and commercials, music videos. And I always try to do something new and fresh in every video. And that's not what music videos want. They want right. you to do exactly the same thing you did for this other artist. Can we do the same thing, please? That was really difficult for me. Anyway, my first film was a documentary, feature-length documentary called Restless Garden, which I actually shot in Russia. And it's a film about the Soviet-Russian sexual revolution. And it happened organically because Playboy sent me to Russia to film episodes like short episodes news type stories about the sexual revolution and i discovered that there's a whole other dimension to 
what was going on in Russia with the sexual revolution was a rebellion of spirit rather than what we in the West consider the sexual revolution to be, which is this rebellion against materialism and all that other stuff. That was not the case. So I made a feature length film about that. That was my first feature that went to a whole bunch of festivals. And it actually has a new premiere this month on a, on a Russian language platform. It's streaming to Russia. I just ran away from music videos and started making films. That was a kind of a just transition. You become an independent filmmaker and you resign yourself to poverty and struggle and you <laughs> just go for it. Just, that's how it happened. Yeah. Now, you've adapted two of Victor Pelevin's work for a big screen. What's your relationship with him and how did you meet him? He's probably the most important Russian writer living today, in my opinion, in my opinion, many. He's famous for being a complete recluse. He doesn't appear in public ever. He writes a novel a year. It's, he's un unbelievable in that sense. And uh, when I read Generation P, I just immediately understood this is the film I want to make. This is it. This is the story of this advertising guy, this poet who becomes an advertising demigod in this new Russia. And, and I basically, because of my previous film, Restless Garden, I had contacts in kind of the Russian artistic underground, Moscow. And I was able to connect with him. And he saw my film, and then we met, and he said, listen, this is not, this book is impossible to bring to the screen. I have other novels, which are much simpler. We argued a little bit about that, and finally, I, he agreed. And initially, I actually asked him to write a, to co-write a script with me based on, the, on this and then he read a book, one of those how to write a script in 30 days or something. <laughs> it was like, and he said, no, you write it yourself. Screenwriting is not literature. Forget it. Yeah, I'm not going there. Yeah, that's uh, and So since then, I was honored to be one of his friends. He, he really enjoyed Generation P, which is great. So it was pretty much a natural that you're going to do Empire V? Absolutely. You nailed it. Yeah. It was almost, I had no choice. It was like, because I was finishing, I was in post-production on Generation P. Bill Evans showed up and actually put a manuscript on my desk and said, this is the sequel. Yeah. This is the sequel. And the Generation P ends with this big question mark of who is in charge of all this, who controls the world, this crazy world that we live in. And there's this big question mark. And he said, in this book, you'll find that, yes, the answers are all there. You'll find exactly who rules this world. You'll find out exactly who goddess Ishtar is. And so, yeah, it was like, it was a natural transition for me. Yeah. Can you tell me about the controversy and how the film got censored and that was like for you? It was completely unexpected. It was completely out of the blue. And Sony, Pictures, Russia, our distributor, and the film was booked in 1,800 screens. The ad campaign was on for like two months. All the movie theaters were playing out trailers. I mean, you a full-on blockbuster campaign for release. And then we had a sc press screening in Moscow, attended with, I think, 300 journalists from all over the country. Because it was a big event film. The country was really waiting for this film. And the next day, uh, they, the Ministry of Culture pulled out permit, which is a permit to release the film, and which is going to be released a week after the press screening. So a week before the release, it was essentially banned. But when we say banned, we have to understand there's, there is no censorship in Russia according to the Russian constitution. It doesn't, it is freedom of speech, you name it. It's a free country. And yet, as we can see, all they have to do is just not issue a permit. Now, is that censorship or you tell me? Clearly, that's where it is. Of course, there's quite a bit of rather subtle satire 
on the Russian ruling class and the Russian elite who are portrayed as both vampires and Chaldeans, the sort of the vast, the, the elite that serves these vampires. And, and so clearly there's this satire, which they couldn't really, can't really censor that. But then Oxymiron, who is, who plays, who is a rapper who plays one of the lead roles, he plays the antagonist, <laughs> was, he declared a persona non grata for staging concerts, anti-war concerts. He came out very vocally against the war in Ukraine. And his, him being one of the main characters, that was supposedly the excuse as to why they didn't release the film. Yeah. Um, but none of that is, is spelled out. This is all kind of very vague, very, yeah. What does that do to you? You must have been terribly disappointed if that devastated that your movie's not getting played now. Oh, totally devastated. Yeah. Not just me, but the entire hundreds of people that worked on this film, literally for years, for years, because it's a big production and a very difficult production, very ambitious production. So, so yeah, it was completely out of the blue and unbelievable. Unbelievable. Not only were we banned in Russia, we were also not really welcome outside of Russia because, because when we started applying to various festivals, just the fact that it was in Russian language was already enough for them to say no, irrespective of what the film was about and so forth, which I don't think is very constructive because we need to change things in Russia and we need to help that change here in the West. And I think I'm very grateful to Fantasia for and Mitch Davis, the artistic director, who saw through all that. Well, finally, the film will have its premiere. <laughs> it should have been a year ago in Moscow. Yeah. I have to tell you, the film looks fantastic. I don't know what the budget was, but it looks so good. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. There were a lot of artists from all over the world that worked on this film, and especially on the CG part of it. There's over 12 studios that worked on it. A lot of these artists did it literally for free or at cost because they love the ideas and they love the concepts that we were trying to create. There was a lot of experimental stuff in the CG part of this, specifically fractal animation, which is something that intrigued me very much because I needed to create this other dimensions that are inhuman that that don't look like anything that we've ever seen before and uh, i hooked on fractal animation which essentially very abstract stuff algorithmically created uh, animation very hard to control these very experimental things and normally these are these abstract hallucinogenic trips and uh, we did is we uh, were able to through literally dozens and dozens of tests actually get control over some of the, the fractals. Um, that's something that's very experimental and very new in the film. I got a lot of help on this from some major artists, major studios. Alexei Tilevich was the, in his studio Logan, which is based in Los Angeles, and they do a lot of high-end commercials, and they do most of the advertising for Apple. He was the lead concept artist on the film, and his studio did a lot of amazing work for us for free, literally, because there was something that they wanted to do. And the same goes for a whole bunch of other studios that worked with us. Yeah. So ultimately, the budget is eight and a half million dollars, but see on the screen is maybe three or four times that that amount. What's next for the film, and what are you working on now? Next is the premiere in Fantasia, of course, finally. And I'm really sorry that none of my Russian team will be there. Couldn't get them visas. It's really hard. And I'm working on a few things. One of them is actually another Pelevin story based on a novel called Snuff, which essentially deals, it's a 
sci-fi story takes place in the future, but it really deals with the war in Ukraine. It's an amazing story about a drone operator and an android, Lolita-esque android, beautiful uh, girl that ultimately becomes more human than he is. And uh, there's essentially the story is, is a war that is started for the sake of entertainment. And this drone operator who has essentially provoked this war. So it's very topical in a bizarre way, but who would have known that it would become that topical? Because I've been into that story for quite a while, way before the war. But in a way, Pelevin predicted these events. It's not just a critique of Russia. I think the film itself is a global satire on the world that we live in, ruled by a bunch of vampires. <laughs> is there a good place for people to keep up with the film and where it's going to be playing? Hopefully it'll get actual distribution here in the States. I hope so, Mike. I hope so. Right now, we have a sales agent who is working. And we, of course, we'd love to get a distributor in the States. Absolutely. Yeah. That's something that hopefully some of them will come to the screening in Fantasia, see with an audience. It is a big screen experience this film was made for a big screen it's a different experience oh, i can't even imagine yeah like i said it looks fantastic i can't imagine what it would look like projected up on that big screen i'm just looking at it on my monitor and it looks wonderful thank you very much victor thank you so much for your time this was such a pleasure talking with you pleasure talking to you